something that, that was learned throughout the centuries. Uh, what, where and how did mysticism well, begin? We, well, if you want to go to the history of it, I think we should start something with the word itself. Okay. Uh, the term mysticism, uh, as we know it today, and the words that comes from, from the German, mysticus and mystic, the word mystic, mystic mysticus, uh, which is in the German, uh, meant uh, the spiritual world and the spiritual things and so on, whereas mystic meant the individual seeking that union. But it, the, the word goes back further than that. It goes back to a relationship to mysteries in ancient Greece. In ancient Greece, there was a word mysteria, which meant mysteries. And uh, mysteria also can be traced to the word that meant a verb that meant the initiate, the one who was initiated into the mysteries, the secret teachings, and so on. And the beginnings of mysticism go back way before the word to a time of ancient Egypt. Now, if I may diverge, go, uh, deviate for a moment, uh, we can take Plutarch's uh, references to uh, the Osirian rites in ancient Egypt. Osiris was a god. He was, he was uh, murdered by his brother Seth. And then uh, he was discovered, his body was found, put together by his, his sister wife, Isis, and uh, he resurrected. And uh, there we have the first indication of resurrection. And the ceremonies were held in the temple on the lakes, uh, it's the lake of uh, Sayes, the temple there, and the Karnak, in which they performed a dramatic ritual showing the birth of, of Osiris, the death of Osiris, and his resurrection where he became a god of fertility and so on, and how man was supposed to reach up to feel part of that God. Well, those who were initiates later become called, they were called uh, mystes, from which later developed the word mysticism and so on. And uh, also it was related to the word mysteries. But in the, those times, the mysteries did not mean this strange and weird as is applied to it now. Mysteries did not even mean the teachings themselves. The word mysteries meant the place, the event, where these things took place. And so there was an evolution of the two words down through the centuries. Now, uh, I can show you some other examples. Uh, uh, Plutarch, in his uh, Neoplatonic philosophy, goes on to explain that reality was all one. And then, by emanation, reality came down through three stages. First, the intellectual stage, and then it came to the soul stage, and then it came to the material stage, uh, whereby we know only through sensation and things of the physical world. And man had to aspire upward, step by step, to attunement to get to that realization of that one again from which he had descended. All of this is incorporated in the teachings, the ideals, and the principles of mysticism. And isn't it true that, getting back to Osiris, isn't it true that in the experience of this God, when, when uh, the, the man could reach up to experience this God, by the same token, man was also learning how to, in a sense, control that force. Uh, it was a way to reach into the supernatural or this, this mysterious world around us to learn how to control it. So, so that we would not be buffeted so much by this, these unexplained phenomena, but rather would find explanations that would allow us to control our lives. W was that part of, of the uh, evolution of mysticism? Yes, they, as the individual practiced his attunement, his oneness, his realization of God, he developed a technique, a means of experiencing that. However, I'd like to correct this one point. Uh, the true mystic does not think of or use the word supernatural because there is nothing over or beyond nature. Nature is part of the cosmos. There's only one thing. Supernatural would mean there's something over, beyond, and separate from nature. And uh, it's uh, the true mystic and the true mystical philosopher never recognizes the word supernatural because that leads off into phenomena that's fantastic and so on that has no relationship to nature. Whenever a person refers to supernatural, he means he has not known the cause, he can't find the cause, he doesn't understand the explanation of the phenomena, so he categorizes it's supernatural. Whereas the mystic, in the, the true mystic, in learning to examine the true laws of nature, where there is nothing mysterious, uh, there are known and natural functions of being or of God or the cosmic, that the mystic, in understanding those, 
can develop the technique that allows him to choose to work with them and in harmony with them rather than living an uncontrolled life. That's right. The mystic will recognize the unknown. People say there is the unknown. There is that which transcends him at the moment that he doesn't know. But he realizes due to him his lack of knowledge and comprehension and he must acquire the means of converting the unknown into the known. Well, you've mentioned uh, as, as one of the sort of the foundations of the development of, of mysticism a lot of the early mystery schools, like the Osirian mystery schools. But Osiris was a part of the Egyptian religion of the time. That's right. Do you think it's true to say that in fact religion came before mysticism? And that in a sense, mysticism is a purely religious concept? Well, the, I would say that the subjective aspect of religion all came before religion. The subjective aspect, which means, in other words, the, the, individual, of the individual's feeling that he is finite, that there is something that transcends him. And only a fool would say there isn't, because the, the primitive man saw the, the moon, the stars, the planets, uh, the phenomena, the, the, he saw his lightning and thunder and all that. And he knew that he was a small person, and therefore these were forces beyond him. And he, he aspired to those forces, and he felt a unity with them gradually. And of course, then he objectified that feeling by which he wanted to, some things that would represent what he thought. And there, religion grew out of the objective side. Religion is, the pure religion is the subject of the original feeling you first have. Objective side is the rituals, the, the uh, theology that tries to describe it and categorize it. Well, uh, is it possible then that, well, in a sense, religion is not necessarily re mystical? Is that true? Well, it's, it's, it's idealism would be mystical. It's idealism would be mystical. The idealism was for the individual to have an experience of his unity with the divine, with God, or whatever he interprets it. That is the, the objective religion, but the, I mean the objective of it. But the technique to get to it is a different... Is different a different thing, matter. Different matter entirely. Uh, in a sense, uh, we, would, we could define perhaps mysticism as being the experience of oneness through man's inner That's spiritual right. nature. That's right. Whereas sometimes, certainly not in all cases, but sometimes the externality of religion or the worship, this external worship, can get in the way of that inner uh, connection. Would, would that be possible? Yes, that's true. It keeps them too finite. Well, too does, finite. does this mean that people should not be religious? Can religion no, get in the way no. of mystical development? No, I wouldn't say that people, everybody is religious to an extent. I wouldn't say that, but the person should see that his religion doesn't confine him, that it isn't limited, that it doesn't say that you can't turn to your right and to the left, and that it can't say that your thoughts, your individual thoughts are wrong because they don't conform with the theology. There's where the trouble is. When limit when religion binds your thoughts, binds your inner feeling and expression, then it's wrong. I had occasion to talk with uh, two individuals on separate uh, occasions. One was a Buddhist and the other was a Jew. And both of them told me that before they got into mysticism, their religions were not satisfactory for them. They, they just were not finding the answers. After they pursued mysticism away from their religions, they drifted back into their religions and found, much to their surprise, that the principles, the symbolism, the ritual of their religion opened up for them. And they found that within their religion, their, their mysticism and their religion combined beautifully to form a really harmonious philosophy. Is, is this the case with, with a number of well, people? Well, that's, that's true, because in the religions you are given symbols, various symbols and so on. And unless the individual goes back to the origin of the symbol, he takes it objectively, just as it is instead of going back. Take the cross, take the average cross. How did the cross evolve and how did it begin? The average person has no idea of the different crosses. Just his own cross means just this meaning. If you go back to the original creative idea, the mystical idea behind the cross, then he would be not concerned of what shape the force cross was in. And so the symbol to you must go behind the symbol.